worship today on this, the second Sunday of Easter, as we now continue on our 50-day journey towards Pentecost in the 50 holy days of Easter. Not a whole lot of announcements. I, probably the most important two are we pray that you stay well and you stay safe, and we yearn for that day when we can gather together again in this place with one another for worship. Uh, our office hours will be from 8 to 12, Monday through Friday, as long as we are allowed to do that. And um, you can get a hold of the church staff by either calling the office number or get a hold of Pastor Jason or myself by using our crisis care line, by emailing us, or by calling the office. Um, just a couple of announcements. Do check out our church website. Um, it's got lots of information. That's www.sslc.org. Also, that gives you an opportunity for online giving, and if you would desire to do direct deposit, please contact Tanya Reynolds, our church, our parish administrator, and or you can do it the old-fashioned way. You can send it in the mail. And also, we're gonna be celebrating communion today together. If you would gather your elements and uh, bring them to the table, and uh, we will consecrate them at the church here and share the Holy Supper. I believe that is all from the announcement wise, but um, usually we're together in here and we share the peace. However, what we've been doing is sharing the peace and taking a quiet moment to pray for Christ's peace, to touch whoever it is that we believe needs that, either ourselves or someone else. So let's take a moment for the peace and then we'll begin with our prayer. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. By our baptism into the death and resurrection of Christ, God raises us up to new life. Let us confess our sins and all that waits for resurrection in our lives. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection, yet our lives are still shattered by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness.
Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. God is merciful and gracious, granting forgiveness through Jesus Christ to all who confess their sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the and defend us, gracious Lord.
almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from Acts, second chapter, starting with the 14th verse. Peter stands with the eleven, raises, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. You are Israelites. Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God threw him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the def defiant plan and the foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by hands of those outside the law. But God, but God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongues rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God was sworn with an oath to him that he would be put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God rose up, and for all of us are witness, witnesses. The word of the Lord.
Peter, starting with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he was given to us a new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefined, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have, to, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, through perishable, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to, to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice in the indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving this outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. According to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So now we'll have time for our children's sermon. Good morning! It is good to see you. I'm glad that you've joined in with your parents and your family to come and be a part of our worship service today. And you know, today's a weird reading. Today we hear about doubting Thomas. See, Jesus had come to visit the disciples and doubting Thomas wasn't there. Thomas was somewhere else. And so when the disciples told Thomas that Jesus had come and they had seen him and that he was raised and that he was alive, he said that he would not believe unless he saw it with his own eyes. You know, sometimes it's the same way for us. We just have to see things with our own eyes. So what if I told you this morning that I have a basketball in my pocket? Would you believe me? It doesn't look bulky, does it? Right? I don't look like I have a basketball in my pocket, but in fact, I do. It is a little basketball, right? 
Something you would never expect, something you would never believe unless you saw it with your own eyes. You know, sometimes understanding God and Jesus is hard unless we can see it with our own eyes. But we know that Jesus is not here right in front of us. And God is not going to come down and speak to us. But, you know, we can still see God in Christ around us every day. I want you to look to your right or to your left. Look at a sister or a brother or a mom or a dad. Maybe a pastor. Maybe Miss Shannon or Miss Bailey or Mr. Matthew. Miss Joanna. We think about all these people around us, our teachers, our friends, our family, folks that we don't even know that right now are working for the good of us and for our world. These are all places where we can see God and see God's love and see Christ and His resurrection in front of us with our very own eyes. So I want you to remember that. To look for God in the world around you and to know that God, no matter whether he's right in front of us or not, that we can see his love in all sorts of different ways and that his love lives in your heart and that he loves and keeps you in this life and in the next. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for things that sometimes we can't see, but we come to believe. We come to believe it because of the love that we share with others, because of the ways that we see your love given to us by parents and friends and family and teachers and other people. We just thank you so much for the resurrected Jesus. We ask that you would help us to have faith and that you would help us to look for your love in the world around us and that we could also be that love in the world for other people as well. Help us to go share that with people who need it most. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a good week, kids. Thanks. So the good old second Sunday of Easter, as we call it in the biz, the festival of the guest preacher, because nobody wants to preach this passage. <laughs> I mean, what a burger, right? And I'm telling you, Thomas, he just gets a bad rap, right? Doubting Thomas. I mean, we just shamed his name forever and ever and amen. And it's really unfair. Because if you think about it, what were the other disciples going through before Jesus showed up and showed out for them? Think about where they were. They were hiding away by themselves in a locked room. Now, they had good reason to be, right? I mean, they had just that week celebrated the triumphant entry of their king into Jerusalem, Messiah and all the bit, Hosanna in the highest, throwing this big, huge party. They thought Jesus was rolling into town so that he could take over the joint and show everybody who was boss, right? He was going to be that Messiah they had so longed for. But they didn't understand that for Christ to be Messiah meant his death. And so all of a sudden, the tables turn. There's a denial. There's... There's a betrayal. All of a sudden, here you go, and Jesus is on this cross, and he's dead. And we're taking and we're burying him. We're closing the tomb with a huge rock. And you know their life just had to be shook at the very foundation. I mean, these disciples had given up their lives. They had walked away from family and friends and jobs and all sorts of different things to come follow Jesus because they were just understood and just within them knew that this was the Messiah, that this was something new. This was something that was going to change the world. And all of a sudden, the rug is swept out from under them in such a cruel and unforeseen way. Even though Jesus had told them it was coming, they still just didn't understand. They did not get it. 
And so, all they can do is come together and console one another and wonder what is happening and what went on and what they could have done. And I'm sure at some point they might have even said, but remember, he said he was coming back. And then I'm sure somebody else said, yeah, but I mean, what's the likelihood of that? When has that ever happened? Jesus was the only one who raised people from the dead. I mean, he can't just raise himself, right? And the same people that came after Jesus, they were worried were coming after them. And so they're scared. They're afraid. They're broken. And they're hiding away to get away for those people that are coming after them. You just think about the vulnerability of that group. How in the world could they ever have known that Jesus was going to be raised? How in the world could they ever believe when they heard from Mary and the others that it actually he wasn't there? How could they really believe that that was the case, that he hadn't just been stolen away or somebody had, had messed with the grave and until Jesus walked through that door. You will never make me believe that they really knew what was going on and had faith that that was happening, that Jesus was going to come to them. Again, it's just hard for any of us to believe that. And yet he does. He does come to them. And Thomas is in the same situation. Thomas wasn't there. They tell him about it. But again, until he sees it with his own eyes. And I can't blame him. Like I can't blame the others. And again, Jesus comes to him. And I want you all to think about kind of where we are right now. We are isolated. We are consolidating down to our own family packs and our own households. There are folks that are sheltering in place. There are folks that are being quarantined. There is fear. There is anxiety. There is an unknown about all of this that is just palpable. We can feel it. We can breathe it. We can smell it. But I want you to know, just like those disciples, that we are not alone. That Christ this very day comes to us just as he comes to the disciples. And I want you to think about the three things that Jesus gave the disciples both times that he came and spoke to them. He gave them three things. The very first thing he gave was peace. His words were, peace be with you. That same peace that is given to all of us through God and Christ. And then Jesus gave them purpose. He said, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And then thirdly, Jesus gives them power. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that that same presence and purpose and power has been given to all of us. It started with Jesus' death and resurrection. It started with the waters of baptism that are right here. God's peace has been given to us in Jesus Christ and His death and His resurrection because through Christ and through God in Christ, all things are possible, even things we don't understand, even things we can't comprehend. And yet, we still have a purpose too, even in the midst of where we are in this crazy time, we have a purpose of being people who can go out and do the mission that Christ asked us to do. We can call folks that we care about and love and check on them. We can check with our neighbors to make sure that they're okay, especially the elderly and the vulnerable around us. We can make masks. We can give donations. We can do everything that we can to reach out and be people of Christ, even in the midst 
of the chaos and the craziness. And the reason that we can understand that peace and have that purpose is because of the power that God in Christ has given us. That Holy Spirit that was given to us in baptism, which gives us power that we never knew that we had, to be able to go and to live in faith and in hope and in love, all those things that God in Christ has given us, and to go out into the world in different ways now I know, but to go and to share that love with those folks who are in need around us. That theme of faith and hope and love and peace and purpose and power is something I think all of us need to hear right now. And I think it's a word that we need to take to the world so that everybody can share in that peace and that purpose and that power. Go and do that this week. May the Holy Spirit bless us and lead us and guide us as we do. Amen. our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray.
Faithful God, you perform wonders in our midst. Open our eyes to your marvelous power, and when we do not see or believe, give us your sight and your faith. Lord, in your mercy, ever present one, you dwell among your people, grace the church with your Holy Spirit, that through hearing the word and sharing your meal, that we may embody resurrection hope in the world and share your love and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, mighty God, in Jesus Christ, you offer peace beyond human understanding, impart wisdom to the nations. We ask you to give wisdom, Father, and healing and peace and protection for all those who work during this time of crisis, for all the medical folks, for those people who work in homes, for those people who work in shelters, Lord, for those folks who are pharmacists, for those who work in grocery stores, for those who drive trucks, for our, our police and our firefighters, our first responders, Lord, and for our military people, for our leaders around the world. Lord, give them all your wisdom and your grace and your peace and help us persevere during this time, bringing your healing to this world and helping us to know the truth that nothing can take your love from us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, you wore our flesh and our pain in Jesus. May your healing touch comfort the sick, the lonely, the depressed, the forgotten, and all who cry out to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Everlasting God, death could not hold Jesus the Christ in its power. Raise those who have died with Christ in baptism to the life that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, O God, for the sake of the crucified and risen one, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possession, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. He is the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and by rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea, all their creatures, angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and give you their unending praise. living and loving God. We praise you for the creation of the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who lived among us, who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit upon us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death into life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
And then may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. May God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy and bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. to share the good news that Christ is risen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.